Our top stories tonight. Minister of Finance tables the government budget before the new Air assembly. New Zealand Prime Minister will visit New Air on Monday. And power interruptions continue to affect the island. Good evening and welcome to our BCN News Bulletin. I'm Mersa Takala. A special Fakalofa Atu to our viewers from across the region, thanks to our partners at Pacifica TV. Leading our bulletin tonight, the Minister of Finance tabled the appropriation bill for the government's budget. The Minister of Finance, Honorable Crossley Tatui, delivered his budget speech, identifying the appropriate expenditure for the 2024 to 2025 national budget is $68.4 million and a total estimated revenue is $52.5 million. The government's appropriation bill for 2024 to 2025 with a $15.9 million deficit passed the first reading yesterday and was referred to the new Assembly's Public Accounts Committee before returning to the Assembly for the second and third reading in a few weeks' time. Here's more with our senior reporter, Esther Pavihi. The government's appropriation bill for this coming financial year, starting July 1st to 30th June next year, has a shortfall or a deficit of $15.9 million. Mr. Speaker, the total appropriated expenditure for the 2024-2025 national budget is $68.4 million, and total estimated revenue is $52.5 million. This means there is a shortfall or deficit of $15.9 million. These figures represent an increase in appropriated expenditures of $15 million, or 28%, and an increase in the expected revenue of $7.83 million, or 7.5%. The deficit has increased by $7.17 million or precisely 82.1% from the previous financial year 2023-2024 budget. <clears throat> Finance Minister Honorable Crosley Tatui highlighted concerns over the current status of our population in his budget speech, saying the population decline has severely impacted our labor market. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Members, we must rebuild our population. After all, what is a country without its people? and culture. These statistics are very concerning. A population development working group will be established to explore and clarify what the key issues are. The population decline has severely impacted our labor market and has become a constraint to the provision of essential services and economic growth. Key challenges related to leadership human resource capacity building, strategic planning, data management, ICT, and professional development are ongoing priorities. We will strengthen our relationship and dialogue with the diaspora communities and families overseas and explore and establish a diaspora strategy for effective engagement. Mr. Speaker, as a party to the PESA Plus Agreement, we engage on an intra-Pacific labor mobility pilot scheme to address our labor shortage, initially focusing on the health sector. We will also be conducting an assessment research project of our diaspora capacity and capability resource in New Zealand and Australia. The minister also highlighted 16 other key items in his uh, speech, including global challenges, the whole of country reform, governance and leadership, managing regionalism, the 2050 strategy for the Blue Pacific Continent, economic development, the private sector, trade development, state-owned enterprises, population and human resources, Niue Kokaina, social services, Taonga Niue, infrastructure, environment and climate change, and natural resources. There was, though, no specific mention of the government's plans to address the high cost of living, with no cost of living adjustment included in this new budget. BCN News will continue to unpack the government's budget plans in our future bulletins from next week. Esther Pavihi for BCN News. Prime Minister Christopher Luxon will be arriving on the island next Monday on his first visit to the Pacific Islands since becoming Prime Minister in November last year. 
Prime Minister Luxon will be the chief guest at the King's birthday reception hosted by Premier Dalton Tangilangi and will co-host with the New Zealand High Commissioner Mark Gibb. The visit of Prime Minister Luxon to Niue is significant in that he chose Niue to visit first and to spend the first King's birthday commemoration on the island. This will be the first year to commemorate King Charles III's birthday since his coronation in May last year. The Prime Minister's delegation will stay overnight and will be doing some sightseeing on Tuesday and some fishing weather permitting. He will also be hosted by the villages of Avasele and Tamakotonga for a traditional luncheon before departing on Tuesday afternoon bound for Fiji. For his first visit to the region, Prime Minister Christopher Luxon chose to visit only Niue and Fiji. Power blackouts continue to affect the island with an island-wide outage on Monday night lasting two hours. The Niue Power Corporation issued a statement on Tuesday evening to address the recent series of power blackout experienced across the island over the past few nights. According to New Air Power, the island-wide power disruption was primarily caused by an unexpected surge in demand on Monday night, which led to the automatic shutdown of generators due to overload. Here's more with Esther Pavihi. Members of the public took to social media with their frustrations about the constant power outages. Questions were raised in some community group chat rooms asking why the power outage seemed to occur often when one of the consultants, Brendan Kualasea, is not on the island. Questions were also raised about the two brand new generators bought two years ago but have not been used, and also questions as to when the new power station will be commissioned. Earlier this year, during a lengthy power blackout, the government said that, that the new power station would be commissioned in March, but that has not yet happened. Newer Power is still working from the old power station, while also working to bring the new power station online. In its statement, Newer Power said it is important to note that Niue is currently operating only on generator power, as the battery energy storage system, also known as BES, is yet to be fully operational. In February this year, the Niue Assembly Select Committee for Infrastructure looked into concerns raised in the Assembly about the continuing power outages. The committee's findings were tabled in March, sitting of the Assembly, with several short-term recommendations, including the urgent need to equip the Niue power staff with safety gear when handling high-voltage equipment, retention and secondment of well-qualified staff for the Niue power, and to remunerate them appropriately. There was also a recommendation to commission the two Mitsubishi generators as soon as possible and the surge protector projects for households approved by Cabinet in 2019 be reinstated to have these, these surge protectors available to the general public for purchasing. The committee presented three long-term recommendations, including the need for a financial and infrastructure management plan to address all of the maintenance issues of the new power station. There is no doubt that there are many issues affecting the generation of power from infrastructure, resource capacity and long and long term risk management. But also very concerning for the public is the high cost of replacing home appliances damaged due to constant power blackouts. In their statement, Newer Power says that they were working in collaboration with te uh, Tesla technicians overseas who are expected to return in June to facilitate online restoration of BES. This process is dependent upon the arrival of the necessary equipment to the island. Newer Power would like to remind the general public and businesses that uh, to continue to use power wisely and conservatively at this time. Esther Pavihi for BCN News. Canada's non-resident High Commissioner to Niue, Her Excellency Joanne Limay, arrived on the island on Monday, presenting her credentials to the Premier and Cabinet on Tuesday. This formal ceremony marks a significant step in strengthening the diplomatic relations between Canada and Niue. In a government press release, it states that the Honourable Dalton Tangilangi met High Commissioner Limay last year for a bilateral meeting during the Pacific Islands Forum Leaders Meeting held in Cook Islands. This visit further solidifies the commitment of both nations to enhance cooperation and mutual understanding. Honourable Tangilangi also acknowledged funding made by the Canadian government for the old Niue Primary School shelter after Cyclone Heta in 2004. High Commissioner Limay brings with her a wealth of experience and a distinguished career in diplomacy. She leaves the island next Monday. 
A village disaster plan workshop was held last week between the Niue Disaster Management Office and representatives from the food and agriculture organizations. Village council representatives from around the island were invited to the week-long session. NDMO manager Robin Hekau shares more on this. So we first looked at our most vulnerable villages, that is from Abaseli all the way up to Hikutawake, and trying to um, updating on their disaster plans because it's always been a challenge um, since 2004 people are now uh, pretty much kind of relaxing and more complacent uh, not really worrying about it so we're just trying to updating the plans now the session was facilitated by new zealand based consultant dr nushifa williams the workshop aims at providing a tailor-made disaster plan for the village's specific needs this consultation and this work for the uh, village disaster plans for the villages here in, in Niue. So um, FAO has put up some funding towards this in helping uh, reviewing and also updating on the village plans for different villages. So we have uh, Dr. Uh, Nuisefa Williams from New Zealand and um, with Ofania Ikiwa who is the FAO representative here on Niue. New Zealand Metrological Service representative Ravin Das was on the island last week working alongside Niue Met Service to bring up to par the capacity and capability of early warning systems on the island. Das is part of the Weather Ready Pacific program. Um, so my job is to lead the severe weather work uh, within that program to enable Met Services to deliver early warnings for all. Part of his work involved co-designing the enhancements of severe weather forecasting at New Met Service and also observing workflow at the centre. The program that's supporting this work is uh, um, supporting the Weather Ready Pacific program and early warnings for all across the whole region, which means we are looking at um, bringing up the capacity and capability of the Pacific Island Nations Met Services to deliver early warnings for all from end-to-end -end service, from the forecast issue to the user, to the public. No stranger to the island, BCN News caught up with Niue Honey Chief Executive Officer Richard Duncan this week. He shares on the company's upcoming projects. The award-winning certified organic and unpasteurized new and honey, considered one of the best in the world, has some exciting new projects in the pipeline. New Air Honey CEO Richard Duncan shared more on the marketing of their product abroad. So that kind of gave us the confidence. I mean, we knew it was it was, a, it was a fantastic honey, um, but of course, you know, we would, wouldn't we? <laughs> so, um, but you never really know until you launch something how the consumer's going to react. And that's really ultimately, that's the, that's the final test, isn't it? But the consumers have loved it, and now we need to find scale. And so to scale sales, we need to find that same niche gourmet uh, um, consumer in other bigger markets like Australia, like the US, like Europe. And so for us going forward now, we've almost like tested the product in the New Zealand market. It's gone well, it has given us the confidence to try and get our resources together and, and invest again in, in some of these other uh, bigger markets. Duncan also shared on venturing out to new markets as well. It's good to be back here and see old friends and, and, um, and I look forward to, um, I guess, as we move forward in the year and get into other markets, telling the story of what, of, you know, it's not just about the honey, it's about the island, it's about the people, the culture, and I think I've seen, you know, as we've seen a bit with the ocean-wide stuff and the, yeah, you know, it's just, it's telling the story and letting people know um, that particularly on the, on the bee sanctuary side of things, that's going well, and so we've had support from uh, the World Trade Organization to, they did a feasibility study, then COVID hit, and now it started again with a regional survey, and so we're looking to how that unfolds in the years ahead. He says it's always good to be back on the island and the significance of telling the new air honey story always. The company has two full-time staff and one part-time worker. Chief scientist for the National Geographic Pristine Sea Project, Dr. Ellen Friedlander, says during the expedition to the Beverage Reef last year, they discovered some of the most pristine ecosystems found nowhere else in the world. Dr. Ellen was amongst the team that was part of the National Geographic produced documentary, Protecting Paradise, the Story of Niue, that is currently being viewed exclusively on the island. Washington-based filmmaker Margaret Miller says the most important audience is our local community in viewing the Protecting Paradise, the story of Niue. 
Miller, who has overseen the production last year in July, says it's good to be back on the rock. What we, the goal was to really bring Niwe together uh, to life as a community. And then with Pristine Seas during the expedition last July, bring everything together um, and just show the great work that both Pristine Seas and Niwe are doing collaborations. National Geographic Chief Scientist Dr. Ellen Friedlander, who headed the expedition last July, says the documentary highlights the Niuean's traditional knowledge of the sea and how modern science collaboration can forward marine conservation. The documentary really highlights the Niuean people, their traditional knowledge associated with the sea and how the collaborations with modern science can help uh, forward marine conservation. So like I said, we are looking at everything from whales and sharks all the way down to the most minuscule things that you can't even see. People showed up in numbers at the exclusive viewing during the week at various locations on the island. What we found was that Beverage Reef is some of the most pristine reefs in the Pacific, full of sharks, healthy corals, and just an ecosystem that's vibrant. And even down to some of the deepest depths, down to thousands of meters, we found an incredible ecosystem like we haven't seen anywhere else. The National Geographic Pristine Seas Project is dedicated to protecting vital places in the ocean, and the project is in collaboration with New Air Oceanwide now. New Airs are the first to see the documentary produced by National Geographic before it is released internationally through Disney Plus in early June. The New Air Cultural Dance Group is all geared up for the much-anticipated 13th Festival of Pacific Arts and Culture that will be held in Hawaii next week. After three months of rehearsals, the group held a live concert at the Taonga New Air Auditorium on Tuesday evening. Mostly the food, right? Uh, this is my first time going to Hawaii and just wanted to try different food and stuff like that. But it's a good opportunity for young people like us to expand their ways of going out everywhere and with each other and stuff like that. Similar sentiments were shared by fellow group member Georgina Valiana. Um, I'm looking forward to just enjoying the experience of traveling with um, the other families and friends from our island and also just representing my country in Hawaii. The concert was able to collect a total of $5,500 from those that attended. We wish our cultural group the very best at the festival as they depart for Hawaii tomorrow. And in sports, the senior women's netball competition was held over the weekend at the Paliasi grounds. The Classics Rebels team took out first place, followed by Hakupu Stars in second. Third place went to Tuapa TMT, and the fourth spot went to Tama Ava. And the Eastern Force Tuaki and Blues won for the best uniform team. And finally tonight on our feature segment, we meet Elder Robert and Sister Laura Nelson, who are missionaries serving for the Church of Jesus Christ of Later Day Saints on the Rock. We caught up with Sister Nelson as she shares more on what life and service for the community has been like. After their retirement, the Nelsons decided to do mission work for their LDS church, not realizing that it would bring them all the way to the other side of the world to an island nation paradise called Niue. Speaking to BCN News, Sister Laura Nelson says when they left their home country of Alberta in Western Canada last year, the transition from the bitter cold to the warm tropical climate was a big shock, but one they had comfortably adapted to. Canada is very different in m most ways. And so we did some online research, but we had, to be honest, had never heard of New Age before we received this assignment. So we, everything was new and exciting, and the expectation was that we would learn lots, and we have. <laughs> the couple's mission is focused on service for others in the community. Despite missing family back home was a challenge, the Nelsons have been warmly welcomed by the local people, attending various cultural events and functions, enjoying the fresh local produce available, and visiting the beautiful sceneries around the island. We were called as member and leader support missionaries. So sometimes young missionaries in the church uh, are called as proselyting missionaries. So they actually teach gospel principles to people who are interested. Our role here is just to help. So we're really here to just be whatever service we can. Elder Nelson has built a few houses, so he's done lots of repairing. This week he repaired a dresser drawer and a fan and you know he's rebuilt things for people he built an umu roof for someone uh, whatever we can do to help 
The couple will be celebrating their 44th anniversary in the next few months and are looking forward to spending time with all their 20 grandchildren when they return home in December after serving two years on the island. First and foremost, we'll miss the people. We've made lots of good friends that we're really going to miss. And, you know, Canada's almost 12,000 kilometers away. I don't know how often we'll get back. So we're going to miss our friends. We're going to miss the... We have six months of winter winter, like cold winter, so we're going to really miss the fact that it really never gets cold here. The new Elita Day Saints Church has two branches located in Alofi and La Kepa with an estimated 300 members. And that's our news bulletin for tonight. And just a reminder that there will be no midday news on radio on Monday next week for the King's Birthdays public holiday. You can join us for BCN News next week Tuesday for our Vangahau Bulletin. Until then, good evening.